Call me crazy, but I think it finally happened. Hell has frozen over. Pigs are flying out in the skies. My high school crush finally texted me back. And EA made a single player game without loot boxes or microtransactions, and it's good. On top of that, it might be the best Metroidvania title in 2019. Now, before we go any further, consider this your minor, minor spoiler warning. I'm going to be spoiling just a little bit of how the gameplay works, uh, just because I need some gameplay footage to show, and that's just kind of the nature of things. So, so don't get don't get mad at me. I warned you. Jedi Fallen Order has blown me away. It's blown me away with its graphics, its gameplay, and the fact that it's really scratching that Metroidvania itch that never really is satisfied. From the moment that you get out of the intro and go to the first planet, you just you start to notice just how many possibilities that there are, how many places you can explore, all of the side areas that you can go to, all of the side puzzles that you're able to solve, and the few uh, optional monsters and mini-bosses that uh, sprinkle the landscape. I did kind of know what I was getting myself into before I bought this game because I was a couple days late to the party and I was told and I read that it's a Souls-like, uh, it's a narrative game, and it's a Metroidvania. I loved The Last of Us. I loved God of War. So uh, narrative game, yes please. I really, really enjoy Souls-like games. I love challenging myself and defeating difficult bosses, so two points. and. Metroidvania <laughs> is over. Now, I gotta say, the further that I get into Jedi Fallen Order, the more I'm realizing that it's not really a true Metroidvania, but I think that's okay. With all of these weird melds of the, of the genre, we have Metroidvania, we have Souls-like action, we have narrative, any one of those is gonna suffer at least a little bit with the inclusion of the others. It's only natural when you're creating things, especially as complicated as a video game, and especially if you're under a time crunch like these developers probably were. And you might be saying, hey, hey, clown, you told me this was a Metrovania. What's with the clickbaity title? But here's the thing, even though I don't think it's a true, a pure Metroidvania for a couple different reasons, which I'll get into in a minute or two, it scratches that itch really, really well. And you know, I said a minute or two, but Let's just jump into it. The big reasons that I have are very closely related to each other. Uh, and the first one is that even though the game is riddled with side areas and optional things to collect and life upgrades that you can find and optional monsters and side paths and shortcuts that you can find, the main path is very, very linear. And in a couple rare cases, you'll even find yourself in a bit of a dungeon. Once you go into the dungeon, do your thing, and come back out, you're probably not going to have any reason to go back in there ever again. And that way it's a bit closer to a Zelda-like than it is a Metroidvania. In Zelda games, you pretty much always know where to go next because the game tells you either through the characters or directly points you in that direction, or the characters. I didn't have a third reason. But really the big point here is just how linear everything is. The game is divided into a few different planets, and when you go down to a planet, you're going to be landing in pretty much the same spot every time. The first time that you're there, there's really only one way to go. So you go down that path, there might be a few branches here and there that lead to maybe a shortcut, maybe a, a cosmetic item upgrade, if you're lucky, a force or life upgrade, but you're going to continue going down that one path until you reach your destination. There's not really much in the way of player expression as far as the exploration is concerned. You just kind of find a place that looks like it can be gone into and it might be useful. And second reason, which closely ties into the first and its linearity, um, you always know pretty much where to go. The game doesn't hide this from you. And in many Metroidvanias, what ends up happening is you're kind of dropped into a world that you don't know anything about and you're asked to find your way. You're usually given very little guidance. You don't know exactly where to go. It's up to you to explore and figure it out and put those pieces together like a like a, a puzzle made out of the entire world. That's part of what makes the exploration so satisfying. But even though I have these two reasons that the game isn't a true or a pure Metroidvania, it's still really manages to scratch that itch for me. 
There's just enough different side areas and shortcuts. And once you unlock a few of your powers, the world is just open enough to where you feel like you could go just about wherever you want to go and get something done. The more I play, the more that I realize that that openness is a bit of an illusion, but that doesn't stop me from recommending it as a game for Metroidvania fans. Especially if you also like narrative games like God of War or The Last of Us, or especially if you like games like Dark Souls or Dark Souls 2 or Dark Souls 3 or Bloodborne or Sekiro. <laughs> I took, I took that one a little too far. Souls-like games tend to scratch that exploration itch too, but one of the big reasons why Dark Souls specifically is disqualified as a Metroidvania is because all of the gates or the locks that you find in the game, you bypass just by going up to them or defeating a specific monster. They're not bypassed by gaining abilities. But in the Fallen Order, you do gain those abilities. You gain abilities that allow you to traverse and down a new path or open up a new gate or find a new shortcut or go further down a path that you found a dead end on before. So it is more railroaded of an experience than Dark Souls, for example. But at the same time, it also has that ability gating that makes the Metroidvania experience or is part of what makes the Metroidvania experience so satisfying. Remembering that you found this same obstacle that you just learned how to bypass in an area that you were at before is just, mm, I love it. So yeah, I think The Fallen Order is a pretty fantastic game, especially if you're a fan of Souls-likes and Metroidvanias, because while it's neither of those things in its purest forms, it does both of those just well enough to where if you're a fan of either or especially both of those genres, you're going to have a really, really good time. Now, the game's not perfect, not by any means. For one, I don't know why the AAA industry is so obsessed with slow, boring climbing segments. There's a lot of them in this game. There's a lot of them in God of War 2018 or 2017. I don't remember which year that came out. Uh, that's basically the entirety of the Uncharted series, from what I understand. Just stop. We don't we don't want to climb. Climbing sucks. Or at least don't make it a focal point of your travel. And second, maybe it's because I'm playing on Grandmaster. Some of the enemies feel really cheap. But then again, I'm playing on Grandmaster, so I'm probably doing this to myself. And third, a lot of the exploration, the longer that I play, feels really worthless and pointless. And unlike other Metroidvanias, a lot of the side areas that you explore and the treasure chests that you open are very inconsequential to the gameplay. In other Metroidvanias, you'll find power upgrades, health upgrades, um, more tools or ammo expansions or just anything that can help you survive a little better later on. And yeah, Fallen Order does have like health upgrades and uh, force upgrades that you can find throughout the world. They're very few and far between. Most of what you'll end up finding are cosmetic upgrades for your lightsaber, your coat, your poncho, your robot, which is a freaking adorable little robot, by the way, and uh, the spaceship. It's cool that you have the customization options, but if that's all you're unlocking when you're going down these side paths and exploring the planet for all the secrets that it has, it starts to feel a little bit tacked on. Is, is that fair? I think that's fair. And because of all of that, I don't think the games were playable at all. Um, I think once you beat it, you're probably done with it unless you want to challenge yourself on Grandmaster. But I don't think even Grandmaster is uh, the hardest experience in the world. Um, I find it pretty difficult. It doesn't really mess around much, but I'm still getting through it with um, not too many retries. I'm dying a lot, but I expected that. I'm kind of rambling, so I'm just going to wrap this up. I'm really enjoying Fallen Order. It's really surprised me with how much it's scratching that Metroidvania itch, especially with as uh, hit and miss as 3D Metroidvanias or 3D Metroidvania-like experiences can be, um, as rare as they are. I kind of want to do a whole video on 3D Metroidvanias in general because I think it's an interesting topic to talk about, and I need to stop people from calling Dark Souls a Metroidvania because it's not. But that's going to be it for this video, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. And with that, uh, I have no time left on my video recording, so I'll see you next time. Bye bye. I 
I need help. 